Let me make sure I get the chats working the way that everything should work. Can you put the there over there? Stick them in there. Um, hang on one sec. Hosts and panelists, everybody can talk to everybody, and everyone can talk to everyone. There we go. Right. Um, Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Eighteen participants on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Everybody. Hello, Sally. Yep, uh, Dave. We can't hear you, sir. Hi, everybody. Dave's uh, trying to get operational. What's that? We can't hear you, Dave. Oh, you can't. You can't hear me. No. Now I can. Enough, you know, we're pitching. What in the world is going on? All right. You've been eclipsed. People. I've been <laughs> eclipsified. All right. I got no idea. I'm I'm broadcasting from a from a hotel room, so who knows whether it's going to work or not. So welcome everybody. Um, I got I got a bunch. We got a bunch to go through. Uh, we passed the spending for everything now at two weeks ago, so that's awesome. So let us know where you're from, and what's your one word for doing business with the federal government. The government, right, Rafa? The government. That's it. The government. The government. The government. <laughs> the government, because the government's money. Yes. Uh, hey, that was pretty funny. I thought that, that was, was very funny. That's a dad joke. Government. So, yeah. So to bring everybody up to speed, um, yesterday we were we were going to be in Rochester, New York, for the eclipse, and then we found out it was going to be cloudy. So we were like, where can we? Where should we go? Should we go towards Cleveland, or should we go other ways? So we went all the way up into Quebec, up uh, up into uh, where where did we go? Ayers Cliffs. Don't ask me where that is, but it's in totality. So uh, GPS is your friend. So if you got to see the eclipse, that's awesome. We got to see it. And then I spent more time in traffic than I've ever spent in my life trying to get there. So I thought I'd be back today. Nope, I'm in Hartford, Connecticut. So that's my story and why I'm why I'm uh, sitting here in this uh, in this place. Sally White is here today. She's in, um, where are you at? You're, you're where? Oh, I just put it in the chat. So I actually am from Park City, but today I'm in DC. I'm at the Gaylord in uh, Gaylord Harbor wow. and uh, hanging out with three stars and four stars and admirals <laughs> and people who, 19,000 people and government contractors. And uh, super quick, I'm actually having lunch with Secretary, Secretary Carlos del Toro. So I'm going to have to leave early. But really, uh, 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 no, a really important announcement yesterday. So they said, sorry, Raytheon, sorry, BAE, sorry, Northrop Grumman, but we need our solutions fast. So if so, you have got to start talking to secondary primes and companies <laughs> like, you know, the 31, 49 people who are here today, <laughs> because we need that capability. So I've never heard that in any conference I've been to. So lots of opportunity for, for all of us. That's awesome. And, and thanks for the update on that. I'm sure Sally's going to keep, keep cranking that. So Jay Talbot says uh, he's from Gilbert, Arizona. I know Jay. He's, he says mind boggling is what the government is the word. And Kelly from California is awesome. And uh, David from Palm, Palm Beach. Zooming in from Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's where I was. I drove through Massachusetts at a very slow pace last night, Connie. So uh, Daniel from Knoxville says, one word is cyber. There's just a little bit of cyber work. Just a little bit. Right, right, Sally? Just a little? Yep. Yeah. So uh, Tyson Workman from Tallahassee Complicated. You're not the only one that thinks that. Tyson, you're absolutely right. Sue B from Charleston. Awesome. Amelia Denver. Sally, we know from Park City, Rochester, New York. I was just there. Jennifer Bellows, well, did you see the eclipse or was it cloudy? Because we were there. We went to a little little pub while we were there. It was awesome. Minneapolis, fantastic, Eric. I did. I'm Jay. I did forget my backdrop. I'm not supposed to be here. So uh, Heather from Germantown and Brian. Follow along with the trash kit. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, we're we're not going to be doing AI during these sessions. So, 
I don't know how that works or how we can stop it, but we're not going to be doing those things. Um, how do we stop that? Do we know, Rafa? Yeah, we just click on where it says. Where was like that? I just did it. You say disable. Okay, fantastic. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, we're not um, we're not working. We're not working with AI. We are. This is non AI zone. We're real people. So uh, Darius, San Antonio, Texas, fantastic. One word for Eric is neophyte. <laughs> we were talking about you, Eric. <laughs> I'm so, I'm only kidding, man. All right, Meg from Clearfield Air Force Base in Utah, fantastic. And Amy from Missouri, new to this, love it. Amy, fantastic. We'll we'll get started. And if you have anything else you'd like to chat about, we love it. Doing business with the government is not easy, and that's why we're here. Love the fact that you're here. Hot seat questions for today. Here they are, folks. This is for Peter, for Sally, and Rafa. Uh, Brian is in the Netherlands. Another lot at all. He doesn't have time for us here. So we <laughs> he told me he's on a cruise. So we're gonna we're gonna let him do his little mini or cruise things. Uh, but Brian's a former contracting officer. I'll introduce everybody in just a minute. So why is it so hard to get traction? How do you, how can you tell who buys what you sell and what's the best contract vehicle for what you sell? And this is great for everybody. We will also talk about the bonuses of how Sam Radar can help. If you have no idea what Sam Radar is, welcome to the party, because now you're gonna learn a little bit. Participation is easy. We love it. Don't we, Peter Timbis? We love Peter. We love it. When absolutely, absolutely. Don't don't be afraid. If you're brand new uh, and, and you've never done anything like this before, you're you're among friends. Uh, we share links and docs. Let me see if I have this real. I'll I'll get the docs for today's session in just a minute. And if you have any questions, raise your hand. Pop it in the Q and A. We love it, and we don't mind unmuting or answering any questions that you got. Quick disclaimer for industry, this is not, uh, this is for audience, is participation only, information, participation does not guarantee an award. If you're a govy, we love govies, don't we, Rafa? That's we right. Love, we love, we love So yeah, if you um if you want to participate as a vent and, and does it, as a govy, you are not obligated to buy from anybody here. Today we're going to connect you with some experts. They are here. We'll be discussing what works and we'll be highlighting sponsors like the one that's up there, samradar.com. If you don't know what it is, we'll tell you. All right, so let's get to know each other a little bit. Let's see what let's see what we got. Where's my polls? There they are. There they are. Here we go. How long you been in business? Brand spanking new, one to two years, 20 plus years. We usually have folks in the middle and all over. And if you've ever been to one of these sessions before, we love it. If you've, if you've been here and you haven't, I know Jay's been here. I know several other folks have been here. So not yet is the, the most. I love it. Very good. And while we're doing that, uh, in the session handouts, I'm going to grab this from my, my very competent assistant hold on if i can get what did i do get this down get that out all right here we go hold on a sec guys i'm operating on my mobile so yeah we were not expecting to be here we we're expecting to be at least close to back home and here we go let me grab this for everybody grab this oh stop and pop it into the chat. Let me let me know if this actually works for you guys. Can you check to make sure that that? Yep, yep, yep. It's in, Dave. All right, fantastic. Very good. So I'm going to resume my share. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And back on to the the presentation at hand. There we go. All right, fantastic. So we do have some handouts. Ralph has got some special news. I'm going to let him do that in just a minute. So with one word, anybody got one more word for doing business with the government? I'm going to check. A lot of folks have, have a little bit of challenges with that. If you have one word, that's why we're here. Difficulties, right? Challenges. It's huge. A lot of folks tell us when we're talking to people. Anybody else? Let's see. Daunting, terrifying, absolutely. Those are all big words that make it very difficult. And we have with us today, we have the doctor, the colonel, the Kentucky Fried Cuban, as I like to say, uh, but he's he's my good friend, Rafa, from South Florida. 
Say hey to everybody, Rafa. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Marty fans. So you got some big news. You got a couple of big news things. You got you're up for an award, number one. Yep. And then you're also you got something coming out on Amazon or something, I heard. Well, there's there's a couple of things very exciting. Number one, we've got our book, our new ebook uh on procurement readiness, which everyone on this event today, Dave, will have a free complimentary copy. So you need to sign up for this and you will get one gratis, free, no charge. If you're part of GovBrief, if you're part of the monthly webinars with Dave Lowe's group, you get a free copy, my friends. And it was it was uh, uh, well written. It's a brief guide on procurement readiness and how to get ready to do business with the world's largest supply chain, which is the federal government. OK, uh, so we have that. The other announcement is that today, uh, well, yesterday we're celebrating because we were selected as the public relations agency of record for none other than the book that's coming out this summer, uh, summer 2024. It's called The uh, Final Flight, The Queen of Air. It's based on a real life crime story of, of law enforcement here in the United States and counter narco terrorism programs, drug interdiction programs. And guess what? Uh, one of my clients is actually, well, two of my uh, a client firm, they're actually subject matter experts and consultants to the FAA. This book is gonna help put them on the map as world subject matter experts, right? Which is gonna help them charge more, command more of a premium for their work that workshops that they facilitate. So way to position your thought leadership by becoming a subject matter expert under the guise of our public relations services. And we're gonna, we're representing them and we're launching that and we announced this yesterday. So very, very happy about that, Dave. That's awesome, man. I had no idea. I was chasing the eclipse. Congratulations, my man. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. And so, so you know who Rafa is, a former supply chain dealing with all kinds of procurement for major corporations, done a lot of business with the federal government as well, helps with capability yep. statements and briefings and business cards. He's the best. That's why he's here. And if your folks from your marketing <laughs> team say this. Yeah. Okay, if you, you get the deer in the headlights awesome. look, right? If you get the deer in the headlights look. Whenever you ask for a marketing, your marketing experts, if you want a capability statement and they, you get the deer in the headlights, look, you're you're talking to the wrong crowd. That's you should right. be working with us, right? We've got you. And an center. And a lot of folks are saying it today, right? So the whole idea is yeah, it's it's cumbersome, it's difficult, it's different. Operating in the government is different, and he can help with different things, uh, capability statements, capabilities, okay. business cards. I love when you do that, Rafa. So yep. if you have any, if you don't have a capability statement, or if your capability statement is not doing its job, probably more likely, mm -hmm. uh, check out Rafa. He'll 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 review it for you for free, right? That's right. We do a free review, no strings attached, no obligation. Fantastic. And Rafa, I've just been sharing mine. Hi everybody, I've just been sharing my capability statement that. Um, Rafa did for me with a lot of the government contractors and people here at CR Space, and they love it. I mean, it is so beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> and you can you share it with the group too as a as a leave behind so they can see the quality of the of the work and the service that you provide on your page. Um, I'm sort of like in the middle of trying to like walk in the middle of this thing. <laughs> oh, so but but feel free to go ahead and do it. You have it. You created it. Feel free to share it. Good so, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Share it away. So, and Martha says, we'll send you an email to Raphael. So fantastic, Martha. Yeah, you're, you met you met the right guy. So uh, Sally does, she's an Uber connector. Shocking as that would be as she is tooling her way into, where are you at? You're in DC at, at the Gaylord. Yeah, the Gaylord at the Sea Air Space Conference. There's 19,000 plus uh, people here, federal contractors, people with Nav Air, Nav C, Nav Air, Nav Fact, all of the different uh, naval swim lanes, et cetera, and a lot of government contractors, primes. Um, there's generals everywhere, three stars, four stars, admirals. I mean, it's just an amazing, it's such an honor to be here. And I actually joined, so I'm not a military person, but I joined, so I'm a Navy League member. And I really encourage you, you know, whatever That's group awesome. you're serving, whether it's the Department of Homeland Security, the Navy, DOD, you can join as a member, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And then you walk around as a membership and membership has its privileges. So I love being here. Um, it's great to see all of you, but I'm gonna make my way down so I can get a really good seat to uh, at a Secretary Del Toro's uh, luncheon. Well, that, that is great. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah go. Yeah. And, uh, and, and 
I know Sally. She hates this word, but I, she is one. She's she's like me. So if she's there. I guarantee you, she's gonna meet him because she's a stalker like I am. No, I know him. I'll I'll send you a selfie of him. There you go. And Peter has a selfie too. I'll send you a selfie right now. He and I and Peter and him. I introduced him to Peter too. That's fantastic. He's it's a cheap Peter smoothie Kimberly. officer. Yeah, she is a cheap smoothie officer. That is for sure. That is for sure. All right, Peter Timmis helps folks get get uh, funding. What I love about Peter, uh, if you know anything about your bank, the bank doesn't know anything about the government, and they just don't. Their heads explode. If you have a ten million dollar contract, right, Peter, and you're a million dollar firm, the bank's going to choke, right? right? But you don't you don't choke because you lend to the opportunity. What does that mean to lend to the opportunity? Well, before I tell them about lending to the opportunity, I want to congratulate my good friend Raphael for the good news and his willingness to share his ebook with everybody complimentary ebook today, which is fantastic, Raphael. They Thank need you, to sir. Get it. They need to read it and they need to follow up with you because you are the best in this industry as far as getting them ready and to be proactive to go into the federal government space. So congratulations, my friend. Thank you so much for your kind words. Um, We've been doing this for 34 years. The difference, I think, is our philosophy is that we're going to lend to the opportunity rather than your financial statements. So whether you're a brand new company, I noticed that half the people here are existing federal government contractors. And one of the reasons that they can't grow to the level that they'd like to be is because they can't get access to capital. So whether you're a new company or an existing company, we're going to lend to that opportunity and give you access to capital. I'll just give you a simple uh, example. We have a current client, a million dollar business. Uh, she was with a bank in the DC area, $150,000 line of credit. They wouldn't increase her line because we gave her a letter of financial support saying to the government, should you win, the, the contracts that will be there to financially support her. Two were federal government contracts, two were state of Maryland, uh, and two were state of Illinois. We, we supplied financial support letters to all five of those entities, and she won all five. So she won all instead, five? She won all five. Fantastic. Now, instead, instead, she's invoicing 83000 a month. This is all going to take her to 650000 an invoicing month. So she's wow. going to go from a million dollar company to a seven to eight million dollar company. And she wouldn't have been able to do that without our access to capital, lending to the opportunity, giving a letter of financial support. So we bring a lot of value to um, our client base as far as promoting them to grow and to acquire business. But they've got to be man. proactive. They've got to be proactive and they got to find out what the, where the opportunities are. And that's where Sam Radar comes in just so they can identify those opportunities in their NACE codes. I appreciate it, man. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, that's what I love about Peter. He, he knows his business has been around for a long time, and that's why he's here. Uh, Brian Hebel, as I mentioned, is in the Netherlands. He sent me a picture of tulips on my phone. So there you go. So he's not going to be joining us today, but he has many, many years of insider business uh, work in the federal government uh, as a contracting officer for 34 years with CMS. And uh, so we wish him the best and um, he'll be back shortly, but, it, and, and he pops in on the Monday round tables too. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, today for me, I will be talking today about the SAM.gov tutorial. You can find that on govbrief.us. I do that every second Tuesday right after this. It works out very nicely. Oftentimes, the Dr. Colonel winds up joining me. You can, you're can. you welcome to join me again, too, if you can, Rafa. Absolutely. You. Right, Always. So, so um, I, I, I focus on the marketing side and the data side, and there's a question in, in the chat specifically, I think, for, for me from Ross. Saying he relieves, receives a lot of solicitations, talks about what's on the horizon or, or over the horizon on Intel requirements that'll be released in 30, 60, 90, or 120 days, RFPs, RFQ, whatever. And you, as one of their subscribers, have access to this non public info. So these so called databases are drawing from the same underlying data. You're right. 
you're right. It's drawing from the same underlying data and it, there has to be a difference. And I'm going to show you the difference that, that we're talking about with Sam Rader because it's not, a, it is a database and it looks at things, but it looks at it differently. And it is truly proprietary. And the info that we have is proprietary because we're running algorithms. Nobody else is. And we look at stuff that, that's good. So we'll talk a lot. We, we'll, we'll give you a chance to be able to take a look at that as well. And we appreciate your, your asking the question. So alternative, alternative, an example of an alternative SAM database is Dell Tech's products. Correct. Dell Tech is on the top side, right? They have, they go out after a lot of the big folks and we'll talk about, we'll talk about apples to apples comparison because it isn't apples and apples. For that so i appreciate the question ross is leading me right into where we go because uh my world we we'll uh we talk specifically when we're talking about not doing ai it's because people buy from people and we want to reach federal marketing we, with using federal marketing we want to reach decision makers and that's the 132,000 program managers 70,000 plus active uh procurement folks that's what we do with gov brief rafael mentioned it being a subject mm -hmm. matter expert makes a difference, doesn't it, Rafa? Absolutely. It, in, it increases your value in, in your prospect's eyes and gives you a benefit that you just can't get any other way. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, if you're if you're the subject matter expert, people will listen, right? Yep. And that's what GovBrief is made for. In fact, we're doing it for industry. Today, I'm doing a Sam.gov tutorial. If you want, if you want that, I think we got 40 or 50 people signed up for that one. So that's good. We also have a whole bunch of other folks. You can check them out on govbrief.us. Rafael Marrero is talking about um, sources sought, right, Rafa? Absolutely. Very so, important, Dave. Yeah. And we one of the things that we do is we push this towards the government. So if you talk about needing to reach government decision makers and stakeholders, especially on the program side, no list of program managers, to your point, Ross. Nobody's nobody's out there with a list of program managers. We nope. have the list, but we don't know what they do. So we push it out and we pull them in. And last time we did this, we had 120 people come in for, for hearing about the deaf community using direct video calling. So, and then we have other pieces that we do. You can see Rafa on the bottom here on April 16th, right, Rafa? That one had, right. we rescheduled that one. So you have the opportunity to get in on that, by the way. I, April next 16th. week, next, next week, week, next Tuesday. Yep. Today we have Sam.gov tutorial. Tomorrow, uh, Jason Moy is going to be joining me talking about bid and award protests. And let me tell you something. That is a process that you should know about because if you win one, it could be bid or you could have a protest against you. Or if you lost one, you might want to protest against the winner. And that has mm -hmm. become a business practice. So that's a good place to be. The other part we have is Sam Radar, Game Changer. We'll talk about that a little bit. Because the spending fuse is lit. What do I mean by that is now we have to spend $1.2 trillion by when? Who wants to tell me? By when? Uh, uh, September 30th. September 30th. Because they have to do it. They have to spend every dime. And the hot seat questions, why is it so hard to get federal traction? And how can you tell who buys what you sell? And what is the best contract be able to what you sell. So hot seat question number one, I'm going to go out and I ask Peter first. Peter, why is it so hard to get traction in the federal space? And I know you come to it from the money side, but you know a lot more than just the money side. So why is it so hard to get traction? Well, you've got to be, you've got to be organized and you've got to get, uh, you've got to know a system on market intel to identify opportunities uh, that you want to go after. And you probably have to break those down by agencies. And then I'm taking a little bit of your thunder. If you want to try to identify who in the marketplace is giving out the most contracts in your NASCOs. So I think the biggest thing is to be proactive and to have the, 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 the great market Intel to know how to identify the product. But in addition to that, you gotta be prepared. And that's where the good doctor comes in to, to make you prepared. You gotta look the part. So even if you have the market intel and you go after this, but you don't look the part, you're just spinning your wheels. 
So you've got to look the part. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be prepared. You got to be proactive, and uh, you got to have the right market intel. And because the market doesn't look the same, right? So everybody, you know, when I got into the federal market in 2007, I I was in telecom, and I thought, and I had been in telecom for many years up, up to about 2002. And I was like, I'm gonna see everybody that I used to know. I didn't know anybody, nobody that was so different. And that's what a big challenge is, right, Rafa? Is that, is that it's, it's a different market. We wanna approach it, sometimes we wanna approach it like it's business to business, but it's not, is it? No, it's not. It's not. So totally you, different, Dave, totally give different. Us a, Give us a head, give us an overview of what you wrote in your book. What what it makes it so hard to get traction? Well, think of it this way, Dave. I looked at it like it's it's a whole new set of rules of engagement, right? You're you're selling to an institutional supply chain. There are requirements. There is parlance. There's terminology. I mean, if anyone has ever looked at uh, anything related to government, you'll see like alphabet soup, right? Bunch of acronyms bunch of rules, a bunch of new laws that you need to get your head around. So what, what the book is all about is about the tips, useful tips, real world advice on what works to help you get launched properly and make a lasting first impression on a potential decision maker in the federal supply chain. That's what the book is all about. Small chapters, handy advice based on real world expertise, not fluff. Okay. Yes. You'll because it's written in layman's terms. It's not written to impress anyone or carry a dictionary under your arm. Yeah. It's so that people will understand it, right? And so, uh, based on so feedback tell us, from you. So mm -hmm. tell us, why, why do you think it's so hard to get traction? Well, it's hard to get traction because people come with a different mindset, Dave. You Remember, it's like I, I compare it to coming to a new country, right? Ooh. Think of the United States government as this whole new country that you've just come to, right? There's a different language that you need to learn, which is governese, right? Which is government government lingo, right? So it's not Spanish, it's not English, it's not Yiddish. It's 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 you know it's it's government lingo, right? It's a different terminology altogether. The other thing is there's different rules, right? So how do you get from point A to point B, Dave? Well, the government has its own rules for getting registered, right? To becoming registered as a as a resident of that new jurisdiction that you've just come across, right? You've got to get uh, your your company registered, properly registered, and possibly even certified. And then once you're there, that's the license to hunt. You got to go out and hunt, right? There's different ways that the government does uh, con con uh, conducts business. It's incumbent upon you to find out the rules of engagement and to find out the right verbiage you need to use in order to engage with key procurement decision makers. And you and mentioned you mentioned something interesting. Because mm -hmm. you have, first of all, registration at SAM.gov. What does that get you? Well, it gets you the admission fee, right? I mean, that's that's the ticket to go in the door. It's a license yeah. to hunt, just like yeah. just like certifications are, right? It just means that you are a pre-qualified vendor on a database. That's it. Right? That's it. For SAM.gov, and then you get a GSA contract or vehicle. We'll talk about right. vehicles in a minute. Right. But vehicles are how they buy, right? Because they can they can buy from you. You don't even have to have a SAM.gov uh, well, registration for them to yeah. buy from you if you're using credit cards. But most yeah. of us are just doing it on credit cards, right? So, yeah. yep. so SAM.gov is required. And that's part of the, that's the, you not, nobody's calling you off of SAM.gov. Nope. Nobody's going to nope. pick up the phone. But, so, but if you're properly registered in SAM and DSBS, Dave, your chances of being contacted are, are far exponentially higher or considered yeah. because what they're going to do is they're going to do their sniff test when they send out. It's like you're send, throwing out, casting out a wide net, right? When you're fishing, right? And then they see what they can get back, right? <laughs> back to the boat and see what you've got there, right? And you're going to find that you're going to have some, some shoes <laughs> and, and empty cans and things like that. But amongst that, you're going to find some good shrimp, just like Bubba Gump and shrimp, <laughs> you're, you're going to find some good shrimp that you can build upon to make yourself a cocktail. So what they're doing is they're actually looking for sources of companies that are prepared to engage with the federal government that have the right stuff, that are registered, that have a good, strong capabilities narrative, that have verifiable past performance, Dave. That's very important. Yeah. You don't want to oversell your capabilities 
because just like they can get you hired, they can get you fired in the that's real world. Fact. Right. So, so get past, that's another part of why it's so hard, right? You mentioned yeah. past performance. Yeah. You they're requiring five years of past performance in this particular thing, and then how do you get the past performance? You can't get the past performance without winning a contract. You don't. How do you win a contract? Well, you can't. Right. So, yeah. so there's a there's a delicate balance, right, of being able to manage those, and they're starting right. to make some changes for that to. For some of your subcontracting to apply mm -hmm. potentially, but not always. Right. And so, and uh, here's a here's a great one, which uh, U.S. government does its best to level the playing field. Theoretically, Ross, they do, but the reality is, <laughs> it's being played by people that understand. You say, you call them Beltway bandits, right? But they understand what it takes to do it, and everybody else is running from the outside saying, "Hey." I want to play, but it doesn't look like it should. It doesn't yeah. act like it should. There's That's right. regulations. You mentioned the regulations, right? And then your certifications. And folks that come to me and they're like, I got my GSA contract. I don't have any sales. I just did this oh. last week. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so we talked about that. And it's like, why? Because everybody thought that that was the work to get the GSA yeah. contract. That's not work. The work is pushing it. The work is marketing it. The work is getting your, as Peter said, get out in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the in, question. In, in terms of past performance, especially for the benefit for a lot of the newbies, is when you're doing your market intel, you find out, you, you probably want to find out who are the primes that have won business in your area. Did you want to go out to them to act to try to get a contract with them and build your performance through the subcontracting method. That's right. That's what you really want to do. And you got to identify who has won those contracts. Ooh, so that's a yeah. whole a different level of, of uh, being proactive. That's right. Yeah. And Dave, if I may, yeah. just, just to, just to respond to Ross and others, right. This is why it's important. Right. It's important to understand the difference between a level playing field, okay, which means we all start at this level here and how you execute upon that is contingent upon you. That's clearly, right? That's clearly the case. When I was a vendor, uh, when I was a chief procurement officer and worked as a for a very, very large construction outfit that looked for subcontractors, right? Vendor management and subcontractor management is the heart and soul of what I've done for several decades. So I will tell you this: whenever someone came to me, and pitched to me and pitched me on the fact that they were 8A veteran owned, women owned, that didn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I wanted to know if you can deliver the goods, right? Do you have the right stuff? Are you able to deliver on time, on budget and in construction safely because you have a good safety, a quality and safety program. If your OSHA records are clean from interstate you know, accidents and things like that, if there's any flags because the moment that I contract you as a subcontractor, you're my liability, right? You're a blemish on my record. So I want to make sure that you've got the right goods. No one here is forced to hire any subcontractor just on the basis of their ethnicity, prior military record, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there are small business programs intended to help raise participation in the small business community, of which I'm a big defender, by the way, right? I've been doing this for 35 years. But you don't get a contract on the basis alone of being a minority, of, of a veteran, a woman, or being in a hub zone. If you're going about it that way, you're pitching it the wrong way, and you're really, really going to be rubbing people the wrong way because your, your way of convincing them is like, hey, look, I can mitigate your risk. I can help you achieve your mission objectives. I can help you deliver on time, on budget, right, and safely, and I can help you by doing X, Y, and Z. Boom, 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 boom. Here's my past performance citations. They clearly map to your scope of work. We'd like an opportunity to become a subcontractor to earn our keep and earn our stripes under your radar, okay? That's what we're asking for. 90% of small businesses are gonna start out that way because mm -hmm. they're not gonna have the maturities model to engage as a prime, okay? That's a fact of life. It's a fact of economics and it's a fact of business reality. So, you know, that's, that's, that's very important. Yeah. To add, add, Raphael, to add on to that, I've been to many conferences and listened to contracting officers, and they don't want to know how good you are. How can you provide us with the best possible solution and solve yeah. my problem? 
Yeah. That's it. Solve the problem. And Gene is saying, what if I don't have the past performance data specific to the federal government? That's the big deal, Gene, right? And is it okay to put general performance? The answer is you put whatever performance is relevant to that particular mm -hmm. um, requirement, right? If they're asking for something, you're going to give them and you're going to explain to them how that works. But you're probably going to need to sub first, like Ralpha said, because mm -hmm. they're 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 risk averse. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I, 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 there's a question I want to go back to what Ross said earlier. And that is, if we're going to disrupt the status quo, right? We're, the status quo is the incumbents are winning. You're Beltway bandits. The people that understand the industry, understand the federal government. We want to disrupt the status quo. So what does that mean? That means I just want to know that this is the difference. I'm going to give a key differentiator for you, Ross, because... Do you get paid, number one, do you get paid for doing federal research? Do you get paid for doing all the background or do you get paid when you sell something? Because if you get paid when you sell something, I'm going to give you two things that you can do. You want to review your email mm -hmm. and you want to click and ask the buyer for a meeting or a referral. The meeting with them directly, say, hey, I want to chat with you about this because I just did something very similar. I just did something or I'm working on something that's very similar to what you just awarded. In fact, we're going to be looking at awards and not opportunities. What? That's right. We're going to look at awards. Why? Because 98% don't hit the street. And in the handouts that you have, you're going to see a report that shows exactly that. Because 98% don't hit the street, you've got to figure a way to get to the other ones. You can go compete for the, you go compete for the less than, than 2%. Okay to bid. Okay to watch the source of thought, right, Rafa? You want to watch for That's the right. source of thought? That's before the opportunity hits the street. But most of the time, you're never going to know. And if you don't know, you got to have a plan to find out what that is. In this report that I have, there's two reports, one for last fiscal year, and it looks like this. No competition. What is that? 76%. Do the math. You see it. The percentage of the contracts, these are contract actions that the government has. 76% had either one offer received or it wasn't reported. And if it wasn't reported, that means one. And I'll get that from myself. I'll get it from Brian and all the people that I know in the market. Look at this. The short list, five or fewer, 91%. This better reframe your brain because if you're looking at stuff on Sam.gov, the chances are, number one, it's already wired. They already know who they want. Somebody else has their fingerprints on it because it's our job as industry to get our fingerprints all over that and start to influence the scope of work. This is why we do what we do. 1.34% of last year hit Sam.gov. 139, 140,000, give or take, right? 140,000 opportunities hit the street in 2023. But there was 10 million contract, 10.4 million contract awards. This is why it's you have to look at it differently. And if you don't, you're going to miss it. You can disagree with me. You can say, oh, it doesn't work that way. And I'm here to tell you it does. And if the Ozdebu or the small business liaison says, well, we put out, or the contracting officer, first thing they're going to say, I put everything on Sam.gov. No, you don't. But I don't tell them that. I say, okay, great. Well, let me let me let's talk about the next one you're going to put on Sam.gov because we know, and now you know that 98% don't hit the street. And all we want to do, do one thing: open up an email, click, contact the buyer, ask for a meeting with the buyer, or ask for a referral to the prime. The prime is right there. Peter said it. The prime, you want to be touching the prime too. Raphael said it. You want to be touching the prime. Why? Because they already have the work. And you can start to develop your relationships and past performance. That's critical to you, right, Rafa? Mm hmm So how can you tell who buys what you sell? We already know a little bit of that. Rafa, how do you find out? I know you, I know this is kind of a selfish setup. It's like a <laughs> but so let's just talk about the importance of finding who buys what you sell specifically the competitors mm -hmm. or finding the competitors that overlap with you. And you can do that. You mentioned NAICS codes, right? Earlier. Yeah. NAICS and PSC codes, and that can help you map out the competitive landscape, right? 
makes who's buying BSE, it what you sell. Yeah. Yeah. BSCs being product service codes, right? Mm -hmm. NAICS, NAICS being your NAICS code. Most people know what NAICS codes are, but some people are new here. So explain what a NAICS code is and what it's supposed to do. Sure. So it's a six digit code assigned by the Census Bureau. And it describes what your organization does for a living, or at least should describe, because in some cases your your knucklehead CPA gives you the wrong one, right? And you're <laughs> you're a circus, answer. you're a circus and not a, a construction company, right? Because you're misclassified. It typically appears on the upper left-hand quadrant of your 1120 or on page two of your of your 1040, whatever form you're you're uh, you're filing. So it describes the economic activity. For example, the two three prefix is tied to construction. The 5-4 right. prefix is tied to professional services. And just as a case in point, 237-130, which is heavy construction, civil construction, right? That happens to be one of the main NAICS codes that many of our clients are engaged in because they're in construction, right? So that 237-130, if I want to see who's selling, who's buying what I'm selling, and that's my primary NAICS code, I need to look into that specific uh, from looking at the uh, 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 SAM data available through through Dave, right? And then the other thing is I can look at PSCs because think of PSCs as sort of like a parent and child relationship. The parent being the NAICS code and the PSC as a subset of that, right? So if you really want to get down and dirty and, and hone in on what your competitors are selling, look at their PSC codes because most likely they're tied and there are several PSCs to one NAICS code, just so you know. So if you really want to get specific and granular, which is important when you have very few resources, you need to follow the trail of the PSCs. I'm going to show you something in just a minute. I'm opening it up. In the handouts that I gave you, by the way, did I, can I put that, did I, let me put that back in for those who came late. Let me see. Mm -hmm. So you can grab that, those handouts, those are the session docs. Nice. And and normally I'm a, a lot easier about this, but now I got this freaking laptop that I'm trying to get. Well, you've been eclipsed, Dave. You're on the road. Been eclipsed. Been eclipsed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna open I'm gonna open the the spending report. This is year to date. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna show you exactly what Rafa did. And this is free to you. It's actually in the handouts. You can, you can get it. Come on. Let's go. It's opening up. I'm using an old laptop too, so that's not helping me that at all. Let's see here. All right. So in this, you're going to see this. Now, you're going to screw these bottom tabs. Exactly mm -hmm. what Rafa said. First of all, this is year to date. So here we go with uh, with what we got. Seventy eight percent one. And these are by uh, by now. Right now, we're tracking at three point one percent, hitting Sam.gov. That's going to drop mm -hmm. like a brick by the time you get through the second half of this year. But what we're talking about, can everybody see this, by the way? Can you see it, Rafa? I can see it. All right, so yeah, I can bottom see it. tab, this is your NAICS codes. That's exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then you have your PSC codes. And if you take a look, you can see by NAICS code what the largest NAICS codes are, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can also check this out, guys. This is really, really cool is that you can see the vendor wins, but I want to go jump over this one and go to the detailed, which is, what did you say you're, the uh, the vendor, what, what did you, what, what, what's construction, heavy construction again? 237-130. 237-130. 130. So if you type in this, you will find all the competitors in your NACE code and their corresponding PSCs that they're using. This is important. Very because important. These are, your, these are your competitors that you'll be able to then identify and then go back and do your tracking and stalk your competitors that are overlapping with you. This mm -hmm. is one of the best things that you can do as a company is to be able to find your competition and then watch what they do. Now, we just happen to have a system that does exactly that. You take this UEI, you pop it into SAM Radar, and it watches for you. So every day that they get an award, you know about it. That's right. You don't have to, you don't have to do any of the research because it does it for you. And it says yesterday, one of your competitors won an award that never hit SAM.gov. So what's your action item? Click, contact the buyer. Hey. I noticed that you, I'd love to chat with you about what you just awarded to pick up, pick electric right there, pick electric. Why? Because it was awarded in your next code. 
and your PSCs. Did that work right? Two three seven one three zero. That is that right? Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Cool. Yeah, that's power and communications line and related structures. That's a lot of our our clients that are in heavy construction are doing infrastructure work, Dave, for five yeah. G and six G. They're building out the infrastructure for of you know for the major telcos. And if you're wondering if there's dollars, this is dollars so far won by right. each one of these at those that combination. You can right. take this if you want to go back and see the total wins by Pick Electric. Copy that. Go to back to vendors and say, boom, hey, I'd like to see, come on now, pinwheel me, here we go. And now, now we can see exactly how much that vendor has won. I say that. That's beautiful, that's beautiful, Dave. You know how much time you're saving people by doing that? Exactly, that's exactly why we do it. And when we do this, when we, and Rob, Rob Lundholm, where are we? Search, let's go. I'm gonna show you how much money these guys have made so far. Pick Electric has won total of $9 million this year, this year so far. So the objective, again, as Raphael has said, is find, find out who's buying in your space. And that's what Peter said, find out who's buying in your space and then go out after them. Now, the question is the who, who is it? Well, you can do a crap ton of research. I'll show you how to do it at one o'clock. You can come to the one o'clock session. And we also do FPDS, Sam.gov FPDS. That's 100% of the market, 100% of the reported market. There's still some nuances out there with P cards and other things and other ways that the government buys. Other transaction authorities, OTAs. There's a lot of ways that they can buy. The question is, what is the best way for you? And I just want to make sure you know this, this. We just gave it to you, gave you that as a resource. So while we're talking about this, I want to talk about who the stakeholders are. And I'm going to get to the question in just a second. We have senior people at the top, politicals, top people that are appointed by the president of the United States. Literally appointed by the president. Then you have the senior executive service, the top level bureaucrats that take care of the agency. They usually don't change. Every once in a while, they get bumped up to, to being a political appointee. But then when you're a political appointee, somebody new comes in, you're out. We've seen it happen both times, right? Doesn't matter. Red, blue, they come in, doesn't matter. They're going out, right? So here's, here's what Rafa was talking about. Program managers care about getting the job done. They care about, hey, how do I make sure that my job gets done right? is you want to get the job done right. Procurement care about getting the contract done. Two vastly different decision-making trees. If you pitch the program manager on the fact that you're a service-disabled hub zone with a with a this, this uh, socioeconomic category, this, that, or the other, and you have a GSA contract and you have a BPA to do this, that, and the other, that's like wah, 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 Charlie Brown. They don't care yeah. about that. Now, on the other hand, if you're pitching procurement on how great of a fiber optic cable you're running and all the bits and bytes and all the rest of the stuff and the super Wismo equipment that you got in order to do this stuff, you're not going to believe it, Rafa. I've got everything. I've got bucket trucks. I've got diggers. I've got trenchers. I've got, I've got directional boring equipment that will blow your mind. I can go 600 feet and they can pull it right up. They don't care about that. They just care about getting that contract done and getting it done quick. So your job has got to be able to resonate with both of those, which is why your capability statement is so important and why your approach is so important because the contracting people don't develop a thing. The program people throw it over the fence. And that's why in the handouts, you also have the winnable opportunity matrix. The program manager, project manager, throws it over the fence to contracting. That's where an opportunity comes from. Those are, your two, those are your two primaries. Most of us are going to be in this lane. Smaller contracts, when I say smaller, $2 million and smaller, $10 million and smaller, generally going to be in this lane. Generally going to be these two people. You might need some extra help from administrators, the technical representative, the TR, the core, technical representative, COTAR, that's another word. They're responsible once that contract is engaged to help you manage it. 
So that's that's where that goes. I'm not going to take a look at that right now. We'll get to hot seat question number three in just a minute. Are you saying that all federal contracts don't get put on SAM.gov or all federal contracts or all government contracts? Preston, I am unequivocally saying no, they do not. Not only that, most don't, to the tune of 98%. Probably didn't know that before you came here, did you, Preston? And there's the proof. The proof is coming right from FPDS. FPDS is the other government system. That's where they say where the wards are. How do you register for the SAM.gov tutorial? www.govbrief.us. Boom. That's how you do it, Amelia. You can register for that. All right. Any other questions before I jump on this? While we before we jump on this next thing, because I want to make sure we get you out of here in time. I'm actually going to do it on time, believe it or not. So, so when I say contract, what is the best contract vehicle? What does that mean? What is a contract vehicle, first of all? Rafa? Well, a contracting vehicle is a way to transact business on a repeated basis, right? It, think of it as a master services agreement or a product or services agreement. Uh, it's an open contract and it takes on different forms. So a contracting vehicle is just that. It's a way that the that the buyer or the government client has established to buy from you in a repeat business kind of model, right? Repeat model. It could, it could, it could be repeat or it could just say, I just want to buy this desk just once. Right. Just once. Yeah. I, yeah. Or I want to but buy it's this. Open -ended. Yeah. It's open ended and it's not typically the quantities are not specified. Well, it's that's an, an IDIQ. But right. If you have a right. firm fixed price where you say, I'm going to build this mile long piece of cable, mm -hmm. I'm going to pay $10 million to go from here to here. Once you spend that $10 million, that's a contract vehicle, firm fixed price, that's done. That's one type, right? But yep. you mentioned an IDIQ or a blanket purchase agreement, right? Where yep. you can get one award that they can buy over and over and over again. Oh, by the way, 12% of everything you see in that report I just showed you are IDIQs or indefinite delivery vehicles, blanket purchase agreements. They're beautiful things. And they can be used for products and they can be used for services. They can be used for multiple things. The biggest thing I think that Rafa just said is, hey, you can do it over and over again. It's not just once. You win once and nobody else has to see it. It won't show up except after you already got that win and mm -hmm. you have already contracted with them for the task order or the BPA call. That's a beautiful thing. That's my fave. That's what I'm always after. If we can get in there, we can whoop, build a relationship, mm -hmm. prove to them that you can do it. That's all you need. Proof. And make it easy for them. So much easier for them to use a BPA or an IDIQ. So much easier. They don't have to go out to bid. And they can go out to, maybe it's a multiple award, right? Maybe it's five, five folks that have five different companies that qualify. So this is our menu of services. We're just going to compete it between these five. We're seeing that big time. We're seeing it big time in strategic sourcing and Big Mac. You're going to hear those terms where GSA is putting out this big contract. Big Mac, best in class is what that's called. And then everybody else has to fight to be a sub, which is why it's so important, like Peter said, to know who the prime is and start building relationships with the prime. It helps you with your past performance. It also helps you win. Because primes have the same problem too, right, Rafa? Absolutely. You think got the same problem. They're looking for resources too. And guess what? Nobody has a plethora of resources right now. Nobody. Right. So any other comments on what the best contract vehicle is for what you sell? That's not really your lane, Peter, although you do help by being able to prove that that they can they deserve to get it right. Getting one of those contract vehicles, not easy necessarily. Right. Right. You need a relationship. You need to prove to them that you can survive. Right. Historically speaking, most of my fastest growing companies have contract vehicles or on GWACs. And it's a way, especially I have a lot of good clients. Government. IT, hey, I'll say, Peter. GWAC, Government Wide Acquisition Contract. Go ahead. Sorry. For those of you yeah, who are acronym soup, you have landed in it. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, a lot of IT companies and 
you know, we take them from 5 million of revenue to 50, 60, 70 in two or three years with lending to the opportunity, financial support letters. It just, ex they just explode with our services on these contract vehicles. Love it. So here's, Ross has a question. Is the sole U U.S. government buying criteria, LPTA, lease price technically acceptable? The answer used to be, yes, they were mandated to do it. Now they're not. You know why, Ross? Because it didn't work. And they wound up spending more money because cheapest price does not mean better or or least expensive, does it, Rafa? Ever. That's right. Cheaper doesn't mean why do you, How do we know? Because you're not driving Yugos. That's why Yugos was the cheapest price. Technically <laughs> acceptable. No more Yugos. Oh, boy. And some of you people oh. don't even know what I just said. <laughs> Ladas, Soviet Ladas, or Moscow Rich, or, or the Yugoslavian Yugos. That's right. Horrible cars. Horrible cars. Terrible cars. cars. But they have yeah. four wheels, and they got you there sometime. <laughs> yeah. So here's, here's what, in the handouts, one more time. PM... Those that are with the fence, the contracting officer, that's how you create an opportunity. Both of these are people, ladies and gentlemen. It's not coming from the ether. It's not just popping up on Sam.gov. Somebody says they need it, right? Two-minute challenge. Check your email. Do you check your email every day, Rafa? I do. Yeah. Why? I better. You better. <laughs> Right, you better, and that's why this system is built. Sam Rader is built for to send it to you by email. Click one button, ask for a meeting, or ask for a referral. You can pick either option you want. Click the button, talk to it, say, "Hey, I'd love to chat with you about this." Or who's the PM at the prime? Think about this: if you're trying to reach a large prime, what are the chances you're going to be able to find that person? Hmm. But you know, the buyer knows exactly who that. Pro program manager is or project manager is in Lockheed Martin, in Raytheon, in Deloitte. That's who knows. Go right to the source. And then you have a referral from the people that are cutting them a check. It's not hard, but you got to do it. And you got to do it every day. So what we want to do, we want to get into this process. Reach out, get to the PM, and then... When you're talking to the PM and say, well, my stuff doesn't really fit in that contract, but I can do this over here. Would that be beneficial to you? I can help you solve this problem, Mr. Program Manager. I can help you solve this problem, Ms. Project Manager. Mm -hmm. And then they create the opportunity, throw it over the fence to the contracting officer for you. And now you have an award. And the objective is to get to these people, to get them to award it to you. Can be done. Ask for the meeting. Ask for the referral. Maybe you can ask for both. But definitely ask for one of them. And, and I have a rule. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't pick up the phone, they ain't calling you. Nobody's calling you. You got to go do it. And that's how you get injected here. With 87% of the contracts and 91% of the dollars going to one of five. Across the board. We know that 12% of that is IDIQs and BPAs. We also mm -hmm. know the rest of it is coming from people like you and me that are reaching out and building relationships. This is exactly why we do it. And oh, by the way, continual support, Monday roundtables, networking. We had, this is a month and a half ago now, $28 million deal between two SAM Radar users. One of them had the vehicle. One of them had the ability to deliver. They got together and they sent $28 million worth of vehicles to the Ukraine. They met on the Monday roundtables. Federal fundamentals, if you have questions, anything like that, we don't just, hey, here's a tool, Ross. It's not here's a tool. Go have fun. No, here's a tool. Do this. Two minutes a day. Do this and then come to the Monday roundtables and tell people what happened. Tell us what happened. So you can check that out on samradar.com. It's not 202 days. I didn't adjust that. If you want to be in, it's like, 30 days less than that. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you this question, and we'll get you guys out of here in just a minute. Oh, my gosh, I didn't end that poll. Holy cow. That's, that's yeah, going to be off. Yeah. I'm not even Someone operating on Go ahead. Sorry. Someone want to know how to sign up for your one o'clock session. Uh, the answer is govbrief.us. Okay. Hang on one second. Let me ask this question, really. Do you want a piece of the 98%? That's fine. If you don't, if you want to compete the other way, that's fine. We want to make sure we get you out in front of them. It's time to get moving. And the time, I'm telling you, they have to spend every dime by September 30th, right, Rafa? That's right. Every single dime. Every single dime. Rafa, help me help make you look good. We got to get him out of here, Rafa. Reach out to Rafa for state capability statements. He will he will help you out. And you also do video capabilities, right, Rafa? Video capabilities, anything that touches the internet to project to project your brand, we do to protect to project your brand as a capable contractor, able to deliver on the scope of work that the contracting officers are looking for. Love it. You can reach out to Sally. Sally's running around hobnobbing with all the brass, literally. <laughs> Admirals and generals. But you can reach out to Sally. I highly encourage you if you need some additional support, right? Right, Peter? Does a great job in supporting you when you go to events, right? Yeah, absolutely. Does absolutely. a great job. And reach out to Peter. He's the only one that was smart enough to put a code on here so you can just snap it with your phone. <laughs> So but definitely, if you need funding, please reach out to Peter. We'll get to your questions. You can reach out to Brian Hamble, acquisitionhelp.com. Watch out for his stuff. If you need to learn about uh, the FAR, CPARs, he's deep, deep, deep into that stuff. All that kind of stuff I can't stand because it's paperwork. Join me today at 1 p.m. You can find that on www.govbrief.us. And now I'm going to – there you go, Femi, right there. Sam.gov tutorial is today. Is that is that the end of my? I need to check to see if something. I think that's about it. And I'm also going to ask one more poll because I need to know if you guys need some professional help and specifically from these characters that are here today and some of the people that decided to go to uh, the Netherlands. Actually, he doesn't really do a whole lot of that anymore. Um, he doesn't do a lot of, um, let's see if this is right. Oh, that's not right. I don't have the right answer for this one. Don't answer those. Let us know if you need to talk to, God, just reach out to Peter. He'll help you. Peter will call you. If you were here, we'll, we'll give you, we'll do a, a quick recap. All right, guys, I apologize for the weirdness. And thanks for getting me through this, Peter and, and Rafa. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks. My pleasure Thanks. always, Dave. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you. I'll get you your, your link for one if you're going to join me. Yep. Uh, yep, awesome. send it to me. Yep. Awesome, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Bye. everybody for joining us. See you.